Zi Wei, the Chinese term for flavor. But that's not all. There's more than meets the eye. Hey everyone, I'm Siggy, and I'm back with the second episode of the Poor Tea Lexicon. Today, we're looking at the Chinese word for taste and a variety of terminology surrounding it. Zi Wei describes a tea's flavor. However, taste and smell are closely linked together. Wei by itself is mainly used for taste, but can also be used to describe a tea's smell. The boundaries between Wei and Shang are thus quite fluid. Similar to the English words taste and fragrance, Shang carries a more positive connotation, while Wei is more neutral, in turn leaving more room for terminology that describes negative qualities of any given tea as well. First off, let's get into it by looking at some of the basic flavors. The first one on the list is sweetness, called Tian in Chinese. Tian describes a tea's actual sweetness in the mouth. It's usually associated with tea that has been aged for a long time. Tian is more complex than a basic sugary sweetness, since there are many different sugars, amino acids, and even starches that are present that create this impression of sweetness, these sweet flavors. It is considered important for masking the bitterness of a tea. The, this act of masking the bitterness is called yen gai in Chinese. Second, there is bitterness and astringency, called ku se. There's a common saying in China that goes bu ku bu se bu shi cha. It's not tea if it's not bitter and astringent. Important here, however, is this bitterness shouldn't be static. It should vanish quickly after the tea is swallowed. Static and lingering bitterness that stays locked in the mouth is considered undesirable. Third, there is sourness, called suen. And sourness is generally considered a negative quality in poor tea and may usually be the result of mistakes in processing, such as improper drying, improper charging, or improper ronion. Sourness can also occur when a tea is steamed too long before pressing, or the temperature of the steam is too high. And lastly, sourness can be created through storage, for example via exposure to sunlight, Sourness is also associated with an overall weak and watery tea taste and a thin texture. Following these basic flavors, I can say that during my research, I did not find any mentions of saltiness or umami in the context of poor tea in any Chinese tea blogs, forum posts, or books about poor tea. These two basic flavors seem to play a lesser role when talking about poor tea, or they appear elsewhere in the context of different concepts. Next up, let's look at some terms that are related to taste, but may not necessarily be either just taste or directly a type of taste. And the first category I'd like to look here is intensity. The first word in this category is strong or concentrated, which is called nong in Chinese. And it relates to the intensity of a tea's flavor in the mouth, which can be adjusted 
by your steeping technique. For a reference on this, I recommend the How to Brew Poor Tea video that uh, Gabriela and I made together, where we showcase different styles, some more intense, some lighter, or for how to prepare your poor tea. This word, nong, stands in contrast to other words describing similar things, but those words refer to qualities that are inherent to the teas themselves and thus cannot be changed by steeping technique. It's also important to note that it is not related to the actual flavor of the tea itself. So if you perceive some particular notes to be strong, like for example, bitterness or something like that in general, this is not what this refers to. This just refers to sort of the equalizer. If something is turned all the way up, then it's nong. The opposite of this, uh, in the same category, so all the same sort of qualifiers apply, is dan, which is a weak or a light taste. And is also different from words that describe the same thing, but as inherent of the tea, done refers to how the tea is prepared, how it feels in your mouth. Yeah, is it a strong and concentrated tea? Is it a weaker or a lighter tea? Uh, you can use these two words to describe that. For our next category, we're going to look at another important term and some terminology related to it, which is ching. The first word in this category is Ching Wei, which refers to a sort of green or plant taste and is often associated with excessive nitrogen-based fertilizer use or improper Sha Ching, either too low temperature or too short. It can also relate to improper Ronian and is generally considered undesirable. However, some newer generations of drinkers have expressed a preference for Shangpur that actually has Qingwei. However, the meaning between the Qingwei that I just showed you and the Qingwei that those people are talking about might be slightly different. For them, Qingwei is produced with a brief but high temperature Sha Qing. This trend seems to be most common in the Manghai area, a bit less common in Linsang tea, and is not favored at all in Iwu, where tea is still made with a lower temperature but longer Sha Qing. This difference is something I find kind of interesting. My primary source for the term Qing Wei is Shi Kunmu, who is a Taiwanese poor tea expert. He is most likely more closely aligned with the traditional processing methods that were practiced in, uh, practiced in and then later brought back to Iwu, which may be why he views Qingwei as a negative thing, and why his understanding of it is sort of in contrast to the a brief high temperature shaqing that other poor drinkers seem to enjoy quite a lot. I think this is a nice example of something that I described in the first video, this sort of plurality of perspectives and that uh, many people can use the same words to describe somewhat different things. The second word in this category is qing xiang, which stands for a very sort of clear fragrance and unlike Ching Wei is actually a positive quality. It means that a tea feels fresh, light and pure. Also, you should note here once again that Xiang is not used just strictly to describe the tea's fragrance but rather the overall impression you get from it. If a tea feels refreshing to you, fresh, pure, clean, this sort of thing, then you can describe it as having Qing Xiang, 
even if it's not strictly related to just the fragrance of the tea. The last term in this category is Qing Se, which stands for an unripe impression. And I'm specifically saying impression here because this is not just a concrete taste. This term serves as a judgment of a tea's maturity. It can be related to aging, for example in poor tea, but can also relate to other forms of maturation. For example, it can relate to a tea that still needs to calm down after being processed. For example, when you have a fresh yencha uh, that was just roasted, then you probably want to wait a while until it matures into the sort of finished product. That's what Ching Se can refer to. All right. Since we were already on the topic of Qing, which seems to relate to sort of freshness and those kinds of impressions, let's keep going with it and take a look at some other terminology related to freshness. First off, there is Xian Shuang, which refers to the impression of a refreshing flavor in a tea and is related to the presence of glutamic acid and theanine. Bitter polyphenols also contribute to that impression. Usually, this uh, characteristic is ascribed to old tree tea that was harvested in spring. So, if you're drinking a poor tea from an autumn harvest, you should not expect it to have this. The second term in this category is Chun He which refers to a pure, genuine, and gentle flavor. It's important to note here that Chun is an important concept that I'm going to cover in depth in a later video. Like, it's so important and so complex that it probably deserves an entire video of its own that, and would just be too much to cover here. Chun He is comparable to a lotus, that hasn't spread out yet. <coughs> something that holds great potential. And while this isn't something that I found during my research, a sort of personal thought that I've had when learning about this term is that there is a there are some teas, or this chunhe might be what people refer to when they say that a really good tea is special regardless of its age or regardless of its level of maturity. You will always be able to find some kind of special essence in there, even if it really only turns out to be amazing after maybe 30 or 40 years. And maybe this, this is what they mean when they say that a tea holds great potential for aging. That currently it has Chunhe and it will develop into something wonderful as it matures. Okay, we've talked about intensity before, but it was all sort of divorced from uh, the concrete flavor of a tea. So now let's look at some terminology related to a tea's strength that also relates to flavor. First on the list, we have Ba Chi, which is an overpowering tea. Ba Chi refers to a tea that provides stimulation and intensity. It's a tea that has both a potent flavor that stimulates your taste buds and also elicits a strong reaction from your body. Think hiccups, sweating, body heat, etc. Ba Chi is more of a holistic impression and makes reference to a concept in Confucianism called Ba Wang Zhe Dao, which is the way of the tyrant and refers to the cruel and despotic ways of governance in China before Confucianism took over. It also has connotations of the tea taking over 
one's body by force, kind of in a similar way a tyrant would take over a country. So uh, if your body is kind of put under siege by T and completely taken over, you are experiencing Ba Chi. Chi. Uh, pronunciation is still difficult, even if I practice. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the second term in the category, which is Yan Wei and refers to a strong or rich taste. Now this is a fairly rare quality in tea and implies the notion of a strong and bold tea. It does relate to the nong we learned about earlier, but also to these other words that describe a tea's inherent strength. And yen wei invokes an impression of masculinity with a sense of sort of physicality to it. There's a strong comparison there to be made to strong alcohol, like a really high alcohol percentage spirit or that kind of thing. That's the sort of impression you get from a tea that has yin wei. And lastly, there's a bit more of a flexible and less specific term related to strength, which is qian. And it's sort of a generic indicator for strength that can be combined with any other aspect of a T, sort of like a Lego piece. So qian is a word you can kind of add to any aspect of a T to describe that it's strong. That can be flavor, that can be fragrance, or anything else really. Okay, now since this video is supposed to be about way first and foremost, let's look at a number of terms that are more closely related to way and go in line with what I've mentioned in the intro. That the word way being more neutral leaves additional room for more negative terminology. The first in line is shui and refers to a watery taste. If a tea has a lack of flavor or maybe a taste of sort of rotting plants, maybe like a pile of leaves in autumn, that kind of thing, then you could say that it has shui. Second up is a flavor that many of you might be familiar with, which is fermentation flavor also called fa jiao wei. This is another way to refer to the well-known wardway taste in Shupur. But it also goes a bit wider. Like, if a tea has started actively fermenting, for example, if it's been stored too humidly, you can also use fa jiao wei to describe that. Next up, we have a smoke flavor which is yen shun wei, or just yen wei, and refers to a smoky flavor that is more comparable to, for example, the smoke of a cigarette, and less to other types of smoky flavors. Because after that, we also have jiao wei, which refers to a scorched flavor. So there is a distinction being made there. Scorched flavor in tea happens if there is a sudden spike in temperature during sha ching, which can end up scorching the leaves, so they literally get burned. It can also occur if the wok that was used for the sha ching isn't cleaned out properly between batches and leaves from the previous batch get stuck to it and then mixed into the new batch. All right, next up we have a term where I had a bit of trouble translating it properly. What I ended up with is stuffy water taste. It's called shui men wei. And this taste occurs when the leaves were not dried properly after sha ching, which ends up producing a flavor that is stale rather than the kind of fresh or refreshing flavor you would expect from a young poor tea. 
The next taste in line is something that many of us here are also afraid, and it is Mei Wei, also called moldy taste in English. It's the bane of everyone who's trying to store poor tea at home. If your tea develops Mei Wei, then you're probably going to be a bit sad. Okay. When it comes to tea storage specifically, there's another thing we all want to avoid, and that's Yi uh, Zha Wei in Chinese, which means unusual odors are getting mixed into the tea. So if your tea has absorbed exogenous odors, for example, from cooking spices or from incense or other things you are storing together with it, then it has this Yi Zha Wei, and uh, you're not going to be happy about it. Finally, there is one term in this category that is a bit more neutral. It's usually considered more of a negative thing, but it's also down to personal preference to some extent. And that is Hong Cha Wei. As you can already hear from the name, uh, this is Hong Cha flavor, which means that the leaves started oxidizing right after the harvest and turned red before processing. In Chinese, this is considered to produce a so-called orange blossom taste, which is called Cheng Hua Wei. So if your tea has that sort of oxidized Hong Cha-like orange blossom taste, that may be considered a flaw, but some people also like it. It's down to personal preference. Now, after so many negative words, let's look at something a bit more positive. The flavor of the sun. Tai Yang Wei. It's honestly sort of hard to describe what this really is, but it comes from the sun drying process. Personally, I kind of feel like this sun dried flavor is something that you notice more when it's absent, but it just really contributes to the overall positive impression of a really high quality tea. It's not just used for poor, but it is also a very common term in white tea. And of course, generally considered a positive quality. It's not comparable with Ri Guang Chou, or so-called sunlight stench which is created when a finished tea is exposed to direct sunlight, which, as we all know, causes it to be damaged. Okay. We've got through most terminology now. There is one more word I'd like to leave you with. And uh, unlike most tea, at the end of this video, you will be left without taste. Wu Wei. Tasteless taste. It's very elusive and comparable to a Zen state of sorts. It's conceptually related to a very similar sounding word, Wu Wei, in Taoism. The Wu being a sort of becoming nothing, becoming empty. The process of emptying out, if you will. And Wei, not being an action, but rather the motivation or desire that produces the action. This particular kind of tasteless taste can only really be found in extremely old puerty, like we're talking 100 to 200 years old. I'm honestly unsure of how common this term is. I haven't really seen much of it, except in uh, books about puerty. But it was used to describe the sensation that people got when they drank the famous golden melon, which is a poor tea exhibit that's over 150 years old. All right. Now that we've finished looking at a whole bunch of terms in Chinese that relate to the flavor of a tea, some more closely, some more distantly, I hope that you were able to learn something and I hope that you will look forward to future entries 
in the Puerti Lexicon. Goodbye.